was recalling the importance of Adelaide in the textbooks of planning and design. There are three cities in the world that everyone studies, Philadelphia, Savannah, and Adelaide. And they're noted because of their political organization, their social significance, and their relationship to nature. And in honoring um, Light's vision, you know, Jan Gale said he could really work anywhere in the world given his reputation, but I think I can um, reveal that he said I could work anywhere, but I really want to work here um, because of that. And I think it lends to um, the question that Ken Marr and I were asked last week, is Adelaide at a tipping point? And when you look at the political leadership in the state and um, the attention that, that Prime Minister Rudd is giving to design in cities, I think Adelaide and South Australia is at a tipping point. Um, there are so many people in this residency that I, I, I would like to um, that I would like to thank, uh, but uh, time I, I would like to leave time for some some comments and questions. Uh, and although it is the end of the residency, I would just use the opportunity to quote T.S. Eliot, and that is, we shall not cease from, from exploration, and that the end of all exploring will be to arrive where we started, to know the place for the first time. Um, so with so many people to thank, um, not the least of whom is the Premier and my friend Lance Borrell, who's here, who um, got me um, onto this adventure. I hope that although this is the end of my residency that this will be the real beginning of a sustainable future for South Australia. Thank you. Thank you so much, Laura. We're conscious that we're at the, uh, just about the end of our time. Um, can I see a show of hands who'd like to see a couple of questions only, say 10 minutes? Okay, and we won't be affronted if, if others of you need to go. We understand that we agreed to finish this at 7.30. So uh, anybody who's got a couple of questions, would you like to go to the microphone? I think we'll only be able to deal with two questions probably. No, that's okay. A deal's a deal. <laughs> Thank you. And would you be good enough to introduce yourself? Hi, yes. Thanks, Laurie, for your great talk. My name is Eric Nicholson. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Adelaide. Um, my background is ecology, but my future is permaculture design. Um, I chair a community group trying to um, establish a ski farm in Adelaide, and I'd like your views on urban agriculture, and if you were to design a city farm in Adelaide, Greater Adelaide, where would you put it? Because I'm having trouble finding a spot to put one. Well, I don't know that answer, only in so far as, again, I'm emphasizing a process that might identify the most appropriate sites, and that, um, so that would, uh, t time would need to tell. And uh, in so far as we're proposing this integrated design strategy for the city of Adelaide and the assets that I showed, um, identifying the best site would be an outcome of that process. Okay. Your comments on urban agriculture, maybe in terms of, sorry, urban agriculture, your comments on urban agriculture. Well, insofar as I was talking about agriculture, food and wine as an asset and distinction of South Australia, I think there's a great potential for that in, in this environment. But again, it would need to be looked at. It's a way of extending our understanding of those assets into the into a setting where there might be a counterpoint to um, upcoming density and allow greater green space. My name is Kay Bennett. I'm a um, relatively middle class woman on, um, who's retired, has uh, a comfortable income and is able to travel for free or at a re reduced price on public transport. I enjoy all the things that you've spoken about in this city and I live relatively close to the centre of it. But I'm, I'm just wondering tonight how many people here come from north of Grand Junction Road or south of Cement Hill? Not very many. And I think that if we're talking about a sustainable future, we need it to be a future in which everyone shares. And I'm very aware as a, a South Australian who enjoys all the, the wonderful things we have, 
that there are a large number of people who don't have easy access to them, who may be on lower incomes and actually have to pay more to get in to enjoy these things. Have you done anything to look at that? Well, we have the good fortune of... You're, are you talking specifically about transport? I think transport is one component of it. Um, it I'm, I'm aware that it's a lot more expensive for people in those areas where incomes are likely to be lower, where they're, it takes longer, it's more expensive, whether they travel by car or public transport or whatever, and it's not as easy for them to access all these wonderful things. I mean, you came in the middle of the fringe, we can, I can drop into town for nothing on a weekend and see the fringe and enjoy the free entertainment, but I'm aware that there are many Adelaide residents who don't have that option. Certainly choice and diversity of transport options are really important in creating sustainable environments of any kind. And we have the good fortune that my residency is followed by Fred Hansen, who's looking at transport in, in particular. But the notion of diversity and accessibility and affordability is really important in creating a sustainable future. How we um, solve that very particular problem is only related to looking at all the problems at the same time and transport, infrastructure, um, public space being quite significant in solving that problem. So I acknowledge it. What's the answer? Is the process or the decision-making process that may lend itself in that direction? Thank you. Just one more question. Hey, thanks. My name's Ryan. I'm currently studying uh, construction management and economics at UniSA, and uh, one of the major things, obviously, we talk about is risk involved in any project, and uh, always risk comes back to cost, of course. Um, I was just wondering, at the end of the day, I think uh, humanity is a big thing and uh, moving forward together and working together is a big thing. And uh, knowledge is something I think we take for granted. Um, I was just wondering, in your opinion, with the relation to cost, I think it's becoming a very major, big factor that's holding not only South Australia, but possibly the whole world back. And uh, I was wondering what's your opinion on possibly changing those things. Um, may I ask you to just repeat the very last part of that? Um, basically the question is, is um, people working together and uh, how to eliminate cost being the major factor in really doing anything as a risk. Because we always come back to risk as being the problem of uh, bringing forward new ideas. I suppose it gets back to this initial recommendation about um, intelligent investment, design, planning, and development. And I think the, the activity of design tries to look at where the opportunities exist and where innovation uh, is possible. Um, risk tends to be defined in a fairly narrow band of um, what's it going to cost in its first instance. And I think life cycles are very important. Um, and looking at multiple benefits social and environmental being too, you can pay me now or you can pay me later, is, uh, is maybe the, the approach or the, the wisdom around that, uh, around that issue.